One of the next questions is how, how do I protect myself from zina? I think the questions are related. So how do you protect yourself from zina? The reality is number one, number one. Everyone listen to this. It's not what you think I'm going to say. Okay? Self-restraint. Restrain yourself. You can. Restrain yourself. I mean, I had a 14-year-old come to me not so long ago. How do I protect myself from zina? I want to get married. Come on, be a little bit realistic. You've got to protect yourself. You restrain yourself. Sabr, sabr. Come on, your day will come. When we were young, we also used to look at the opposite sex sometimes and think, when will I ever get married? Today, mashallah, you know, we've got children of our own, mashallah. I'm sitting on about eight children by the will of Allah. Mashallah. So, subhanallah, to be honest with you, you have to protect yourself. That's what sabr is all about. You reward. The reward you're going to get is for abstaining from prohibition. That's the reward. So not only your salah and your zakah, that's doing good deeds, but abstaining from bad is also a reward. So here's your opportunity. Stay back. However, the hadith speaks about fasting. So you will fast. Fast every Monday and Thursday. Fast thrice, the, thr you know, three times a month. The ayam will be the 13th, 14th, 15th of the lunar calendar and so on. This will help you. Concentrate. Have good company. Good company really goes a long way in protecting you from adultery. Don't find yourself. Thank you, shukran. Ten minutes. How did that drop straight from 30 to 10, Habibi? Sheikh, I suggest you don't lift it. Let someone else do it, Sheikh. Mashallah. You will have to face everybody here because it's a distraction, Sheikh. We know the time is up. Don't worry. We're now on overtime. Do you know when a match is being played? Football. And it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Do you know what happens? They allow you how many minutes more, Sheikh? I think we have 20 minutes. 20 minutes? No, I think it's more than, it's about 45 minutes. It's a whole half time. Even better. Inshallah. Yeah, 22 and a half minutes each. We have that. This is more important than football. Do you agree, guys? There we are. We have, we are democratic. They have voted. Mashallah. Okay. So, what we need to do, subhanallah, is protect ourselves, have good company, read a lot of the Quran, go into lessons, try and expand your religious learning. Watch out. How you use your phone. How you use your phone. I want to tell you something sad. Many of us feel we're in love with someone because of the phone. But the person in real life, I've come across so many who've got married as a result. A few have been happy, but a lot say it's not who I thought it was. You know why? Today, like you have Photoshop, you also have Akhlaq shop. Which means somehow their Akhlaq is shopped. You think that they're really amazing. And when you live with them, they ignore you. They're on the phone with someone else. And you start thinking, so don't be deceived by the phone. You know, when someone says, I love you, wallahi, so many of them are just saying it because it's just like saying, hello, hi, how are you? And you know what I love you means sometimes nowadays? I want to use you. That's what it means. I promise you, I promise you it means that. Have you seen what I've said once some time back on Twitter? I said, if people can say lol without laughing, they can say I love you without loving. And I think a lot of people caught on that. But I want to add something else today and tell you, a lot of the people say I love you and actually mean without you knowing, I just want to use you. And because women are generally, you know, emotionally, they get more attached. It's sometimes the youth, the young men who are abusing this attachment. So be careful, abstain, be strict on yourself. You fast, you have good company, and you try and engage in more acts of worship. Go out and become a volunteer. Help here, help there. And subhanallah, when the time is right, then you start opening your eyes. And I have one statement for a lot of the brothers and sisters who are not married. Uh, subhanallah. And that is, before you are married, don't close your eyes onto one person. As tough as that sounds. As tough as it sounds. Once you're engaged, then you close your eyes. Done. Because maybe Allah doesn't want you to marry the person because they are bad, horrible. Or maybe Allah doesn't want it because something might go wrong with the children that couple will have and you don't know. So maybe Allah is keeping you apart. I'm not saying don't try. You try. You speak to your parents. You convince them. You can even change your wilaya if you want. You know what that means? This is my wali. He's my father. I will go to the panel of scholars and tell them my father is blocking my marriage without any reason. So I want to marry without my dad. And if you if you qualify for that, you can actually shift that wilaya to a wali will be someone else. Who will it be? 
that panel of scholars in an Islamic country, you'd have the Qadi or someone who would represent you as a Wali. So they, the person becomes a Wali of yours. So you need to be careful because sometimes if you do that and you know that the person you want to marry is not standing on their own two feet in terms of, you know, finances and so on, you might have to come back to your family one day and they might not want you at that stage. I think most families do take you back. But why should we do that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So if you want to protect yourself from zina, there are steps. The hadith speaks of fasting and lowering your gaze. Today, people watch movies and watch this. And you know what? We see all these uh, tutorials. Hijab tutorials are being watched by the males. I don't know what for. Hijab tutorials. And they forward you and say, did you see this hijab? You know, is this the camel hump? Brother, there's a hump in your head, man. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. What are you worried about this thing here for? Take it easy. Let the sisters go ahead and have a peep. But then you look at your wife and you say, you know, I saw the tutorial. I think you need to look a bit like so and so, you know, so and so. May Allah forgive us. So this is why we don't lower our gaze and we don't realize lowering the gaze is very important. Even when it comes to the screen. I know, you know, you always get wise cracks in the youth. Sometimes they say, but Sheikh, I'm lowering my gaze looking in the screen. You know, I'm lo lowering my gaze. That's not what it is. You know what I mean? You don't look at these things by the will of Allah. And if you do, you know, you are allowed to say, mashallah. You know, if you really have great intentions, you can even say, inshallah. But it's okay. That's where it stops. <laughs> Allah. Yeah, we, are, we got two more questions, inshallah. I need to get these out of the way, brothers. So please bear with us. It won't be long, inshallah. Um, but before I go on the question, I just want to mention a story regarding um, how the families reject uh, proposals because of their color. There was a story where uh, a, a, a brother, a, a, a righteous brother from Africa, who came to ask for a sister's hand, and the family rejected based on his color. And unfortunately, this sister ended up in the future time committing zina with a non-Muslim and becoming pregnant. And unfortunately, when this story is told, you know, the parents get shocked. And I'm sure this pa the parents of this sister was shocked as well. But again, you need to ask yourself a question. When your child wanted to do it in a halal way, halal manna brought a ha brother home in a respectful way, and you reject him based on color. And your daughter now, and this is a true story, went and became pregnant by a non-Muslim. And then what does the parents go? They bang their head against the wall. Oh Allah, where did I go wrong? Wallahi, you went wrong by being racist. And the reason why I'm telling this story is because we deal with the youth, we get these messages. This is one of the biggest problems. That's why I really want to, you know, speak to aunties and uncles, please, for the sake of Allah, make it easy on the youth. The worst thing is when they use Islam to justify themselves. How? You know, you've been brought up in a similar environment. That's good enough, subhanAllah. I can tell you another true story. I'm going to have to word it very carefully because of the, what exactly happened. There was a sister who wanted to marry a man from Africa. And she was an Asian. So basically, the parents said no, and there was a big issue, and you know, so many things were discussed, and she was quiet. And a while later, the parents came to me and told me, please, can you convince this daughter to marry the same guy? And I'm like, but what's wrong? Can't you just speak to her? No. You don't know what's happened. Now, one year had passed approximately, and this sister came up to her parents and told them, that I want to marry someone. And you know who that someone was? Another sister. So subhanallah, what happened is the parents now are so worried. And they said, bring the man, no matter who he is and where he's from, bring him on. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. I'm not commenting further, but I'm sure you've understood. Okay, quickly. Um, one of the questions that uh, need to be answered is, how can I get to know somebody in a halal manner? Because unfortunately, a lot of the youth think that Islam is, you don't see the person you want to marry. It's just you, may, you meet on the wedding day and khalas, you get married. And obviously, we know that's not the case. How could one go about getting to know the opposite gender in a halal manner?